astrophysics for people in a hurry let's roll the intro on earth as in the heavens until sir isaac newton wrote down the universal law of gravitation nobody had any reason to presume that the law of physics at home were the same as and everywhere else in the universe earth had earthly things going on the heavens and heavenly things going on according to christian techniques of the day god controlled the heavens rendering them unknowable to our feeble mortal minds when newton bridged this philosophical barrier by rendering all motions compressible and predictable some theologians criticized him for leaving nothing for the creator to do newton had figured out that the force of gravitation pulling ripe apples from their orchards also guides those objects along their curved trajectories and direct the moon in its orbit around the earth newton's law of gravity also guides planets asteroids and comets in their orbit around the sun and keeps hundreds of billion of stars in orbit within our milky way galaxy this university of physical laws derived scientific discoveries like nothing else and gravity was just the beginning Imagine the excitement among 19th century astronomers when the laboratory premise which breaks light beams into a spectrum of colors were first turned to the sun spectra are not only beautiful but contain orders of information about the light emitting objects including its temperature and composition chemical elements reveal themselves by their unique pattern of light or dark bands that cut across the spectrum to people's delight and amazement the chemical signatures on the sun were identical to those in laboratory no longer the exclusive tools of chemists the prism showed that as different as the sun is from earth in size mass temperature location and appearance we both contain the same stuff hydrogen carbon oxygen nitrogen calcium iron and so forth but more important than our laundry list of shared ingredients was the recognition that the law of physics prescribing the formation of this spectral signatures on the sun were the same law operating on earth 93 million miles away so fertile was this concept of universality that it was successfully applied in reverse further analysis of sun's spectrum revealed the signature of an element that had no known counterpart on earth being of the sun the new substance was given a name derived from the greek word helios the sun and was only later discovered in the lab thus helium became the first and only element in the chemist periodic table to be discovered some place other than earth okay the law of physics work in the solar system but do they work across the galaxy across the universe across time itself step by step the law were tested nearby stars also reveal familiar chemicals distant binary stars bounded in mutual orbit seems to know all about newton's law of gravity for the same reason so do binary galaxies and like the geologist stratified sediments which serve as a timeline of earthly events the farther away we look in space the further back in time we see spectra from the most distant object in the universe show the same chemical signatures that we see nearby in space and in time true heavy elements were less abundant back then they are manufactured primarily in subsequent generations of exploding stars 
but the law describing the atomic and molecular process that created these spectral signatures remain intact. In particular, a quantity known as the fine structure constant, which controls the basic fingerprinting for every element, must have remained unchanged for billions of years. Of course, not all things and phenomena in the cosmos have counterpart on Earth. You have probably never walked through a cloud of glowing million degree plasma and I bet you never created a black hole on the street. What matters is the universality of the physical law that described them. When spectral analysis was first applied to the light emitted by interstellar nebulae, a signature was discovered that once again had no counterpart on Earth. At the time, periodic table of elements had no obvious place for a new element to fit. In response, astrophysicists inverted the name nebulium as a placeholder until they could figure out what was going on. Turn out that in space, gaseous nebulae are so rarefied that atoms go long stretches without colliding. Under these conditions, electrons can do things within atoms that had never been seen in Earth labs. Nebulium was simply the signature of ordinary oxygen doing extraordinary things. The universality of physical law tells us that if we land on another planet with a driving alien civilization, they will be running on the same law that we have discovered and tested here on Earth. Even if the aliens are but different social and political beliefs, furthermore, if you want to talk about the aliens, you can bet they don't speak English or French or even Mandarin, nor would you know whether shaking their hands, if indeed their outstretched appetite is a hand would be considered an act of war or of peace. Your best hope is to find a way to communicate using the language of science. Such an attempt was made in 1970s with the planner 10 and 11 and Voyager 1 and 2. All four spacecraft were endowed with enough energy and gravity assist from the giant planets to accept the solar system entirely. Pioneer was a golden etched black hue that showed in scientific pictograms and layout of solar system, a location in the Milky Way galaxy, and the structure of the hydrogen atom. Voyager went further and also included a gold recorded album containing diverse sounds from Mother Earth, including the human heartbeat, whale songs, and musical sections from around the world, including the work of Bitwan and Chugberry. While this humanized the message, it's not clear whether alien ears would have a clue what they were listening to, assuming that they have ears in the first place. My favorite parody of this juncture was a skit of NBC Saturday Night Live shortly after the Voyager launch, in which they showed a written reply from the alien who recovered the spacecraft, not simply requested, send more jug berry. Science thrives not only on the universality of physical law, but also on the existence and persistence of physical constants. The constant of gravitation known by most scientists as Big G supplies Newton's equation of gravity with the measure of how strong the force will be. This quantity has been implicitly tested for variations over enons. If you do the maths, you can determine that a star's luminosity is deeply dependent on Big G. In other words, if Big G had been even slightly different in the past, then the energy output of the sun would have been far more variable than anything the biological, climatological, and geological records indicated. Such is the uniformity of our universe. Among all constants, the speed of light is the most famous. No matter how fast you go, you will never outtake a beam of light. Why not? No experiment ever conducted has ever revealed an object of any form reaching the speed of light. Well-tested law of physics predict and account for that fact. I know this statement sound close-minded. Some of the most bone heated science-based procalations in the past have been underestimated the ingenuity of inventors and engineers. We will never fly. Flying will be never commercially feasible. We will never split the atom. We will never break the sound barrier. We will never go to the moon. 
and what they have in common is that no established law of physics stood in their way the claim we will never outrun a beam of light is a qualitatively different prediction it flows from basic time tested physical principles highway science for industrial traveler of the future will justify read the speed of light it's not just a good idea it's the law unlike getting caught speeding on earth roads the good thing about the law of physics is that they require no law enforcement agencies to maintain them although i did once a greek teacher that proclaimed obey gravity all my measurements suggested that the known fundamental constant and the physical law that reference them are neither time dependent nor location dependent they are truly constant and universal many natural phenomena manifest multiple physical law operating at once this fact often accompanies the analysis and in most cases requires high performance computing to calculate what's going on and to keep track of important parameters when comet shoemaker leave 9 plugged into Jupiter's gas-rich atmosphere in July 1994 and then exploded the most accurate computer model combined law of fluid mechanics thermodynamics kinematics and gravitation climate and weather represent other leading examples of complicated phenomena but the basic law governing them are still to at work Jupiter's great red spot a ragging anticyclone that has been going strong for at least 350 years is driven by an identical physical process that generate storm on earth and elsewhere in the solar system another class of the universal truths is the conservation law where the amount of some measured quantity remains unchanged to no matter what the three most important are the conservation of mass and energy the conservation of linear and angular momentum and the conservation of electric charge This law are in evidence on earth and everywhere we have thought to look from the domain of particle physics to the large scale structure of the universe in spite of this boasting all is not perfect in paradise it happens that we cannot see touch or taste the source of 85% of the gravity we measure in the universe This symmetry dark matter which remains undetected except for its gravitational pull on matter we see may be composed of exotic particles that we have yet to discover or identify a small minority of astrophysicists however are unconvinced and have suggested that there is no dark matter you just need to modify newton's law of gravity simple add a few components to the equations and all will be well perhaps one day we will learn that newton's gravity indeed requires adjustment that will be okay it has happened once before einstein 1916 journal theory of relativity expanded on the principles of newton's gravity in a way that all apply to objects of extremely high mass newton's law of gravity breaks down in this expanded realm which was unknown to him the lesson here is that our confidence flows through the range of conditions over which a law has been tested and verified the border that range the more potent and powerful the law becomes is describing the cosmos for ordinary household gravity newton's law works just fine it goes got us the moon and return us safely to earth in 1969 for black holes and the large scale structure of the universe we need general relativity and if you insert low mass and low speed into einstein equation and they literally become newton's equation all good reasons to develop confidence in one understanding of all we claim to understand to the scientist university of physical law makes the cosmos a marvelous simple place by comparison human nature the philosophic domain is identifiably more daunting in america local school boards vote on subjects to be taught in classroom in some cases votes are cast according to the film of culture political and religious attitudes around the world varying belief system lead to political differences that are not always resolved peacefully the power and beauty of physical law is that they apply everywhere whether or not you choose to believe in them 
in other words after the law of physics everything else is opinion not that scientists don't argue we do a lot but when we do we typically express opinions about the interpretation of insufficient or ready data on the bleeding frontier of our knowledge wherever and whenever a physical law can be invoked in the discussion the debate is graduated to be brief no your idea for a perpetual motion machine will never work it violates well tested law of thermodynamics no you can't build a time machine that will enable you to go back and kill your mother before you were born it violates casual clause and without violating moments law you cannot spontaneously litigate and over the ground whether or not you are seated in the lotus position knowledge of physical law can in some cases give you the confidence to comfort surely people a few years ago i was having a hot cocoa night cap at a desert shop in pasadena california ordered it with a whipped cream of course when it arrived at the table i saw no trace to the stuff After I told the waiter that my cocoa has no whipped cream, he also said I couldn't see it because it shrank to the bottom. But whipped cream has low density and floated all liquid that human consume. So I offered the waiter two possible explanations: either somebody forgot to add the whipped cream to my hot cocoa, or the universal law of physics were different in his restaurant. Unconvinced, he definitely brought over a lot of whipped cream to demonstrate his claim. After bobbing once or twice, the whipped cream rose at the top safely afloated. What better proof do you need to the universality of physical law? Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay tuned for the further videos.